another DIY CNC video. In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up a router for typical tool height measurement technique using the tool library. Okay, CNC 12 mil, which is what I've got up and running right now, I've got version 4.20 is really flexible when it comes to setting up tool height offsets. There's many different methods that CNC 12 supports. And the reason for this is because of the wide variety of machine tools that CNC 12 is installed on. And it's up to the installer to pick a method, set the machine tool up <clears throat> using that method and train the operator as such. And it works great. So a long time ago, I've covered uh, two methods using a reference tool and then reference tool with an email and some old training videos. And those are the reference tool uh, is a great method and works every time, but router users really don't need to use a reference tool. So what's really common with router users and some bed mill users is to set the Z reference position, that's the position in which we're going to measure all the tools from, to be the same position as home. So Z home. So Z home will typically be at the top of the Z axis travel. So simply we're going to tell CNC 12, hey, whenever you set Z home at the top of the Z axis travel, whether you do it manually or automatically using home switches, you're going to set Z reference at that same position. So they're going to both be the same position, which is simply the top of the Z axis travel. And then the tool heights will simply be the distance from home down to the top of a automatic tool touch off device or touching a piece of paper on top of a block, whatever method you want to use at that point. So that's what I'm going to show you here in this video, how to set up CNC 12 for that. So there's a cool parameter in CNC 12. I'm going to go into CNC 12 uh, setup and then parameters. It's parameter three. And if you read the manual, the operator manual on parameter three, there's a bunch of different choices here. But we're going to set parameter three to two. And when you set parameter three to two, that tells CNC 12 is, hey, when I home out, just go ahead and automatically set the Z reference position to be the same as Z home. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm, I have simple home right now, which is jog the machine to the home position. Ideally, this method would be used with home switches. So you have a repeatable home, which is an important point. This method relies on accurate homing, accurate day to day homing. Because you're going to use the home switch as the Z reference position. And so if the home switch moves or you move it or whatever reason, then your tool library is going to become corrupt. You can't just keep measuring tools. So that's one of the downfalls of this method. But if you have accurate, repeatable homing, this is a great method because it eliminates the reference tool entirely and it makes it easy to understand. There's less points because... You know, with milling machine email method, there's three different important Z values, um, points in space, Z home, Z reference, and Z zero. Well, we eliminate and we combine two of those and eliminate one with this method. So Z reference and Z home are going to be the same point. So by setting parameter three to a two, we told CNC 12 to, hey, whenever I push cycle start to go ahead and home the machine out, wherever it homes out, that is also the Z reference position, which in this case is the top of the travel. Now, this DRO here in the upper left hand corner always displays the work coordinate position, in, which is the distance of XYZ relative to the part zero position. If I want to see the position of the machine relative to the home switches, I hold down the Alt button on the keyboard and press D for DRO. And you'll notice up here in the upper left, it changes to machine coordinates. And notice it's all zero because, hey, it's at home. These are the machine coordinates. Now, if I put a tool in the spindle and jog down or automatically have it touch a tool touch off device, and it moves down and it takes that far to move one inch or so from Z home down to the tool touch off with this particular tool. Guess what? That is the tool height offset of tool one. That's the value that we're going to use. 
So it becomes really simple when you set it up this way. So I'm going to go ahead and hit tool check. And if you'll notice, that goes right back to Z0. And we're going to show you a few couple easy things. Notice right now, CNC 12 thinks I have tool 2 loaded. Let's go look at the tool library right now. We're going to go into the offset library. All these H values over here correspond to this distance right here. And the, the distance is that is going to be in these values is what I just explained, which is the distance it takes to move the tool from the home position down to the tool touch-off device. So that is what is going to appear in this column. So let's go ahead and simulate it here. Let's, I jog down, let's say I'm using the piece of paper on a block. I jog down tool one and I just touch off. Let's switch over to incremental and I come down a thousandths at a time. Now I could be doing this automatically, see the F3 auto measure, but right now I'm using the F2 manual measure method. So I jog down tool one and I just touch this surface right here. I hit manual measure. Look at the DRO number, minus 37072, and the tool height offset number. It's the same number. That's because that's the distance it took to move tool one down to touch off. Alrighty, let's hit tool check. Let's insert the next tool. We'll insert tool two, and now we'll jog down, and we'll touch tool two off the same position. So let's say tool two is a little longer. So now it doesn't take as far to jog down and I hit manual measure. And that's the distance that it took to move tool two down to the reference position. Then I hit tool check and I put tool three in the spindle. And then I jog on down and I touch tool three or I hit auto measure to have it automatically hit the TT device. Now tool three is really short so it took a lot further to touch off this position. I hit manual measure. Notice the number on the DRO and here is the same. Now, if I hit Alt D again, you'll go, what is three minus three, nine, five? That number doesn't make any sense. That is the distance of the tip of the tool relative to the work coordinate position, which is e zero, part zero, which may or may not make any sense at this point. And it doesn't matter because you haven't set part zero position. What's, what's important is when you're in the machine coordinates display, that you're seeing that the height offset is also matching the Z value, which is the distance from home to the top of the tool touch off device. So once you've done that and you've gone in and you've measured all your tools, you hit F10 save. Okay, now I'm going to press Alt D again and go back to work coordinates. And I am going to go into setup. You always set your part zero positions after you have your tool library set up. Don't do it before. And then things will start to make sense. Okay, so I'm going to insert tool one into the spindle and jog to touch tool one off the top of my work. So let's go ahead. Let's say I just, I followed the picture here. This is the top of my material. And I want to call the top of my material in this case zero and I put in tool one and I <laughs> let me silence that and I press F10 set and notice the work coordinate position changes to zero because that's what I just told it to do. If I hit Alt D that is the distance that we are from home right now. So what it just did is it took into account the height offset of tool one. Notice we have an H1 up here, up here in the upper right, and applied it to the work coordinate DRO, and therefore it has changed to zero. Now, if I have a job lined up that had tool one, two, three in it, I'm ready to go hit cycle start and graph that job and then run that job with those three tools. You only have to use one tool that's set up in the tool library to automatically set all the other tools so you only have to touch off once off the top of your work with any tool that's set up in the tool library and all the other ones follow automatically. That's the point I'm trying to make. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to call the bottom of the this work piece. Let's say this is three quarter inch MDF and I want to set the bottom of it as zero. What would you do? How would you do that? Well, jog the tool down to touch the top, just like I just did here and and uh, the graphic shows. 
and type in that position. So if, if we decide that the bottom of the MDF is zero, what's the top? Well, it would be positive 0.75. And I'm going to go ahead and hit F10 and look what the DRO reads. The DRO says the tip of the tool in the picture is touching positive 0.75 from Z0. And if Z0 is down here at the bottom, that looks right. So we're ready to go. Alrighty, that's it in a nutshell. Um, Keith, items to remember is when you're in the tool library, press Alt D and you'll work in machine coordinates. You also know, notice here that the Z reference says it's a fixed home. That means it's fixed at Z home. And then all your numbers here, um, let's say we have a uh, tool five in here. I'll just do it once more and we jog down to add tool five. I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm adding an additional tool to the tool library and I hit auto measure or manual measure. Auto measure would automatically come down and touch off of tool touch off. Manual measure means you're going to jog down and touch it yourself. Let's jog down, touch it yourself, hit manual measure. Notice the number on the DRO is the same as the number that appears in the height offset for that tool. Cause that's simply the distance that it took to move tool five down to touch the touch off device or the reference position. Alrighty. Good luck. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.